Right, so for those wanting the Mac Studio to stay in the range, Gurman gives us some good news, so let's delve into it. So for those not aware, Mark Gurman himself did tell us a few weeks ago that there is a chance the M2 Ultra Mac Studio does not release, purely because the upcoming Mac Pro should have the same chip, and so having two desktops with similar performance that targets similar demographics would not make sense. However, Gamma now seemingly backtracks on this leak and says we should see new Mac Studio models. Specifically, there are two new models in the works. Now, unfortunately, that's all Gurman tells us, but it's safe to assume these models in the works could either be the M2 Max and Ultra Max Studio, or of course, maybe an M3 Max and Ultra version. Now, if we do see M3 in this, it's likely we won't see this release anytime soon because we don't even have the base level M3 chips yet, and apparently they've been pushed back. But you know what? I'm just glad the Mac Studio is going to remain in the range. Because for a long time there was a massive gap in the lineup between the Mac Pro and the Mac Mini, and there are many consumers wanting something more versatile and powerful than the Mac Mini without the cost of the Mac Pro. And while the Mac Studio was just that, it was one of the best releases from last year, and so I'm very glad it's not going to end up being a stopgap machine. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Now for those wondering if the Mac Studio continues to exist, how is Apple going to differentiate this from the Mac Pro? Well, German says nothing regarding this, but of course we can theorize. The first clear possibility is Apple giving us a more powerful chip for the Mac Pro down the line. So if Apple really does skip M2 on the Mac Studio because M2 Ultra is coming to the Mac Pro instead, maybe we see the long rumored extreme chip with the M3 generation allowing the Mac Studio to get the M3 Ultra. Because remember the extreme chip was in the works and that was going to be the flagship SoC for the Mac Pro. This was going to be two M2 Ultras put together but it was ultimately canceled because of cost and possible scaling issues. So maybe with a future version of the Mac Pro, Apple does end up releasing this configuration and that would help differentiate these Macs. There's also a possibility that Apple gives us some sort of additional customization with the Mac Pro because I believe in codes, 9to5Mac fan references to a compute module and maybe these modules have M2 Ultras. So you could possibly put multiple modules together and get insane performance and that would make up for the lack of an extreme chip. And the benefit of having these modules is upgradability. So if you initially thought you were fine with one M2 Ultra, but realized you do need more performance, you could just buy another module down the line. If you want to eventually upgrade to the M3 or M4 Ultra, you could ideally just buy new compute modules with these chips and keep the body. So that would be a big reason to get the Mac Pro over the studio. I will say though, it's likely these modules and the Mac Pro itself is going to be very expensive. So the Mac Studio will still have a market amongst prosumers and those who can't justify spending thousands of dollars upgrading their machines on a regular basis. So both can easily coexist. Anyways, let's now delve into your questions. And by the way, many of these questions were asked before this report and you guys thought the Mac Studio was cancelled. So ChatGPT says, I have a Studio Ultra 64 gigs, one terabyte configuration, and I'm glad there's an option between the Mini and the Pro. I do not like my prior Mini's lack of ports and inability to easily add multiple monitors. The Pro is just too expensive for most. And yeah, there definitely is a gap in the market for the Studio, and as long as Apple creates enough differentiation between the Pro and the Studio, they should keep both, because I know many who love the Mac Studio. So Brian S says, it makes sense to discontinue the Studio Ultra too close to the proposed Mac Pro in specs. Like you, I hope they keep the Studio Max in the range. Well, it seems rumors have changed their mind because German now says there's two Mac Studios in the works. But yes, if Apple manages to not give the Mac Pro any sort of special feature, just keeping the Max makes sense because it's likely the most popular configuration at $2,000 you really can't beat the value this machine offers. So Zeus says, mini budget slash mid-range, studio power user, pro enterprise, that's how their desktop offerings should be. And yes, I can't fault that suggestion, Apple should definitely focus 
on the enterprise market for the Mac Pro because apart from a few rich YouTubers, I doubt any regular Pro users actually considering the Mac Pro. So as I suggested, offering additional power would be the best way to differentiate this, whether it be with the compute modules or an extreme chip. So Holstein Cowboy says, hopefully if they do kill it, they do still provide software updates. You will have to not worry about updates in the off chance it's cancelled because the iMac Pro was short lived and still lives on updates wise, but the studio especially being based on the M1 means you should probably get another 7 or 8 years of updates. So Joe says the Mac Studio shouldn't be killed off, hot take but the Mac Pro should be killed off if there's not any use upgradable features kill the cheese grater Mac Pro. So that definitely is a hot take, but you know what? I would not disagree with that completely because while there is a high-end market that likes the Mac Pro, I'm sure it sells in much less numbers compared to the studio. So between those two machines, I would vote to keep the studio. So Alexander says, instead of killing the Mac Studio, Apple should give us a better Mac Pro. I love the Mac Studio. It's the best computer I've ever owned by a large margin. And it's at a perfect price point for me. I got the M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM. And I'm with you on that. I'm very glad German now says, we can expect new Mac Studios. I do very much hope Apple offers additional expandability features on the Mac Pro to differentiate it. And as long as Apple keeps the studio at the same price with similar configurations, I would be very happy. So Evan Rogers says, I think German is wrong. It's too easy to upgrade the studio to let it rot on the vine. And while you did end up being right because he is now backtracking on what he initially said, and you make a good point, Apple will likely not have to change the Mac Studio's design for the next few years. So it's very simple to just replace the existing chip with a brand new SoC. So James N says, I'm not sure I would call the 15 a redesign. If so, it's the smallest redesign we've had. And I would argue the camera layout change from the 12 to 13 was bigger than the curved edges. And true, if this really is a super cycle, it's not that big of a change visually, but that does illustrate how mature the market has become because we really can't expect radical changes anymore and super cycles being this minor is going to be the norm, unfortunately. I will say though, I do appreciate the smaller changes because the sharper corners on the current iPhones can dig into your hand. So curving the corners makes it slightly more comfortable to use but also titanium should make it a lot lighter, which again is going to make the device much nicer in the hand. So I squish yarn, interesting username, but anyways, they say I'm in need for a new laptop, so I can't wait. I'm a little bummed that next year they could release an OLED version, but I just can't wait a full year with my current setup. So I'll be honest, I have major doubts about the MacBook Air getting OLED next year because that would be a high-end feature that of course Apple's not going to debut with their Learn Max. They're going to give it to the MacBook Pro first and then after a few years they bring it down to their cheaper MacBooks. This happened with the Retina display and heck we still don't have 120Hz or Mini LED on the MacBook Air CS. So yes, I doubt we're going to be getting OLED anytime soon with these MacBooks. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this and thank you for watching.